Tonight I want to talk a little bit about science and religion and a couple of very, very impressive and important people in the science world that virtually nobody's ever heard of before because um, their work was so astounding and so incredibly brilliant that uh, today all of the, the so-called scientists uh, know nothing about these people because they were too profoundly important. And so uh, as far as I'm concerned, science today is a religion. And I've always felt that religion should be a science. I think spirituality has begun to be scientifically looked at in certain universities and institutions around the world. So there is a little bit of beginnings of academic interest and scientific interest in spirituality. Well, I think it's about time, at about four or five thousand years, it's about time somebody started looking at the spiritual side of life scientifically. What a clever idea that is. Instead of all this other mumbo jumbo, I mean, the scientists will tell you that um, when, if you want to talk about UFOs and, and aliens and flying saucers and that kind of thing, uh, science will tell you there's uh, nothing to it. It's all a bunch of baloney and uh, nothing to worry about. Just go on back and watch your basketball game and don't worry about it. But these are the people who are being paid salaries from universities who are getting their grants from the federal government. And so these people know what side their bread's buttered on. So they just, they'll tell you anything just to keep you sound asleep so you don't ask too many questions. So that's why I don't really have much uh, respect for scientists. I hold them, generally speaking, some scientists are profoundly wonderful, intelligent people who are doing great work. But that's about uh, four or five people out of the whole entire scientific community. And I'll tell you about those people in a few minutes. I want to finish my tirade on scientists. I have no respect for what we call today science. Science is a religion. It is uh, filled with deception. So you go to, go to university or college and get a science degree. That degree is what we call a work permit. It allows you to go out and get a permit to work. It allows you to uh, get your a government grant so that you can pay your bills. And so um, we have, we've seen so many times in the past, it's continual that if someone makes a discovery, a uh, very important discovery, but if it wasn't a scientist who was connected to a particular university, and it has to be a very well-established, well-known university, well, if that university and that particular, and the scientist working for it did not make the discovery, and if it was just someone who was a scientist on their own and made the discovery, then obviously it's not, it is of no importance to anybody because there is no university that can take the credit for the fine, and no scientist working for a particular, particular university can take credit for finding uh, the new development. And so, therefore, nobody is going to know anything about the newest find, the newest development in science, because science is nothing more than a business. It's a religion. They have their holy books. They have their holy prophets and their, their saints. And, um, and it's, it really is disgusting because, you know, the whole human race is scientifically arrested. It's like everything else. Our educational systems have arrested the intelligence of the people. And generally speaking, people know that the IQ level has been dropped down uh, so bad in America especially. We can't even find our way out of a paper bag. Most people can't even read, and the, half, and the few that do read are all looking at the sports page. So... Again, I would say I have no respect for the scientific community at all because I already know who they are and what they're doing. They're doing the will of the one who pays them. Their, their salaries and their paychecks come from the universities. The universities get their grants from the government. And so you can figure that pretty much everything coming out of science today is a pile of baloney. It's 
what the government wants you to believe. And so, you know, the, the, the guy who pays you, I remember a long time ago somebody said, when you look at a check, don't, it's not really important whose name is at the top of the check. Look at the bottom of the check. Whoever is signing the check is paying the guy at the top of the check. So check the bottom of the check. See who's paying for this. And so when you see that science today in America, and pretty much around the world, but especially in, in, in America, science is financed by government, period. And, uh, and so anything that is in science today, astronomy, whatever the, the, the discipline would be, it must conform to the government's um, agenda. Whatever the government wants you to know and wants you to believe, that's what science will then tell us. It doesn't mean it's true. It doesn't mean it's factual. It just means that none of us uh, know what the scientists are talking about, and they sound very impressive, and after all, they're supposed to be scientists, so they tell you uh, something, and we're supposed to believe it. Well, on the other hand, uh, as I said, I have no respect for science, period, because I know how fallacious this whole discipline called science really is. And so, um, but there are a few people out there who are excellent scientists, but you will not hear about them. You will not hear anything about their work because they're not connected to some prestigious university that gets a lot of money from the federal government. And so uh, their work will be pretty much not even seen and not even talked about. So uh, I, I like what Stanton Friedman said, my, my dear friend Stanton Friedman, the uh, the uh, uh, scientist who I have a high respect for. He's one of the ones I was going to name, Stanton Friedman. He's up in Canada, I believe, uh, lives in, up in Canada. He's a physicist uh, and a nuclear physicist and a very bright nuclear physicist. And But he's also interested in UFOs and other uh, related subjects, and he's quite an authority on everything he speaks about. But two things that Stanton Freeman said that uh, caught my ear, and I, I thought it was very clever. He said that, um, that scientists, when we talk about UFOs, uh, scientists will say, well, show me, show me something. And, you know, put it in my hand. Show me something I can actually look at and uh, examine. As if, you know, we know there's all kinds of stuff that science can look at with UFOs, but they're not interested. They're not about to look at it. But when scientists will say that, will show us something that we can put our hands on and examine instead of just stories. Stanton Freeman says, well, uh, you, you're telling us about something called black holes. And so I said, well, can I see one? Oh, no, no, of course, they're black holes. So that means you can't see them. And I say, wow, that, that's, that's convenient. Black holes are out there but you can't see them. And I think, you know, what, what kind of nonsensical, silly crap is this? Well, you know, there are black holes out there, you know. And you say, well, uh, could you show me one? No, 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 we can't see them. Well, how do you know they're there? Oh, no, we know they're there because we can see black spots. So a uh, uh, black spot obviously is a black hole. So Stanton Freeman said, well, why don't you uh, bring back a piece of that black hole for me as a scientist, so I can look at it and examine it, and then I'll see if you're right. But no, no, you tell us about black holes, and that's all there is to it. You said there were black holes out there, so that's it. And uh, nothing else to be said. Why? Because your university is getting money from the government. They're getting their funds, and uh, you're paying your rent and, and eating well and driving a new car as your scientist, as, your, as a scientist. So therefore, we are to believe that there are such a thing as that black holes. I think science is a black hole, period. Now, as I said, that there are some scientists that you will not hear about that have done extraordinarily brilliant stuff. One, right out the top, as I said, was Stanton Friedman. You might, or might want to go on the web and 
at the moment I don't have his uh, website in my mind, but we'll pl we'll paste it on the uh, on the uh, program to go to Stanton Friedman's website. Love listening to Stanton Friedman. Excellent, excellent uh, information. Brilliantly, brilliantly presented, um, and very, very clever. Also, very interesting and fun guy, but an extraordinary scientist. Uh, another one. Uh, another scientist is Paul Lavallette. Paul is probably one of the most incredibly fascinating uh, guys I have ever listened to as a scientist, an astronomer, and a physicist. I mean, I'm absolutely um, uh, astounded listening to this incredible mind, Paul Lavallette. And we'll put his uh, website and his information up on the homepage also on this on this particular program. You really need to know about the work of Paul de Violet. I, I think I'm saying his name correctly, but we'll put all that information on the program uh, homepage. So Paul's work is, uh, is fascinating when he gets into the astrological symbols and the scientific principles which guide our universe uh, and our solar system, etc., and then another man who is truly a giant that most people have never even heard of. And our world wouldn't even be the same today if it wasn't for this man, and that is Nikolai Tesla. Uh, Nikolai Tesla was born in Eastern Europe. And of course, off the top of my head, I'm giving you these names, so we'll put all that information up uh, on the program. But Nikolai Tesla gave us the world that we live in today. We would still be in the sticks if it wasn't for Nikolai Tesla. He gave us alternating current. He was the one man, Nikolai Tesla, uh, invented what we call radio. Radio was invented by Nikolai Tesla, not Marconi. Marconi was a young man that Nikolai Tesla hired he came to Nikolai Tesla and asked for a job, and he wanted to work with Nikolai Tesla, the great mind, the great scientific, uh, brilliant mind. And so Marconi, a young man, came to Nikolai Tesla and asked him for a job. And Tesla allowed him to work with him and shared with him uh, his work. Well, Marconi, behind Nikolai Tesla's back, took his work on radio that he was developing uh, for radio and went and uh, <clears throat> and copyrighted it and trademarked it or whatever you want to call it. And uh, he became known as the father of radio, Marconi. Well, Marconi never invented radio, period. It's a lie. And the, um, and the, the courts later on when presented with the overwhelming proof that Marconi had stole the paperwork from his boss. And, you know, my God, that's the same thing's happening to me today. I got people who are supposed to be my webmasters who steal everything I own and taking my name and stealing my name and stealing my product and my money and everything else I own. So I know what that feels like to have uh, your work stolen from you. So I wanted to clarify for the whole world that Nikolai Tesla was the man who gave you radio. He also gave you electric lights. He gave you alternating current. So he gave you so many scientific. Just go on the web and look at all of the scientific things that Nikolai Tesla gave to the world, starting with alternating current so you can have house lights and you can run your city and you can run the world on electricity, that's Nikolai Tesla. Let's see, then there's the other, the other scientist I really want you to know about is uh, a man named Royal Rife, R-I-F-E, Royal Rife. Royal Rife was an extraordinary mind, a brilliant man who uh, no, uh, virtually nobody's ever heard of before and will never hear unless somebody like myself brings it out and, and brings it to the public, Royal Rife discovered that 
And I'm just going from my understanding of his work. He was far too brilliant for me to follow. But uh, basically, what Royal Rife discovered is that all diseases, period, vibrate, have some kind of a vibrational frequency to all diseases. And so I'm just giving you the Reader's Digest version that I don't understand the science at all, but I got the point. And that is that all uh, diseases vibrate, all things which are living. And so he found a way to find out different uh, diseases and what those germs, of uh, you know, their vibrational frequencies that these germs had. And then he, uh, uh, from there, developed a telescope, a microscope so that you could zoom in on these uh, uh, disease germs and understand their life of these germs, how uh, how the frequencies worked in these germs, and then developed a a machine that would uh, electrically short out and blow out the fuses on these disease um, on these diseases so that you could kill the disease electrically. And, uh, and it worked. And not only did it work, but it worked so well that uh, even in the L.A. Times, they had articles about the man who has, dis- uh, who has put an end to all diseases. That was in the papers in, in America uh, at one time, New York and the Los Angeles papers, the man who, who put an end to all diseases, Royal Rife. And uh, in his microscope, everybody was amazed at what this man had done and how he was able to kill diseases in just a matter of, of a sh- very short time. Within a day or so, you could uh, you know, go through this machine and, and find out what disease you had, and then he could kill the thing electrically, and it's gone forever. And so uh, Royal Rife was a master at what he did, and a brilliant man, and nobody's ever heard his name. And uh, soon after it hit the papers that Royal Rife had made this incredible discovery on how to kill every disease in the world, immediately all the AMA, the medical establishment, they were not prepared for that. They didn't realize that there was going to be all this stuff in the papers about Royal Rife. So when it came out about what Royal Rife had done, and how well how that puts the whole medical profession out of out of business immediately across the board. I mean, you don't need a doctor, you don't need medicine, you don't need medicine or a doctor or a hospital for God's sake. What do you need a doctor for? What do you need medicine for? If if every disease on the earth can be killed electrically, then why in the world would you need a, a doctor or a hospital or anything else? Just go to Royal Wife's uh, machine and hook it up and. He'll find out what disease you have and bang and and send the electrical current through you and kills that disease and it's over. Move on. So immediately the American Medical Association and the doctors associations across America went into high gear on steroids to make sure nobody hears about Royal Rife. And they called him every name in the book, charged him with everything you can imagine and got rid of him so nobody will ever hear from Royal Rife again. So much for America, land of the free and home of the brave. We, we've, we have been lied to and deceived and treated like, like cattle so that we don't even know the great minds that have been born and came into the world to help the human family and to help us, the humans on this earth, to progress. We have been arrested. We are operating right now in America and around the world under something called arrested development. We can't think. We can't talk. We can't do much of anything. We don't know anything. Most of us can't read, and the handful that can uh, are reading, as I said, the sports page and the, and the comics. Uh, so people have been dumbed down, and they have been lied to, tricked, and deceived, and it's about time we finally wake up to the Royal Rifes and the Nikolai Teslers um, and the um, uh, Paul Levilets and the Stanton Friedmans 
and some of the great minds that have helped the human family that today the universities and the science community have no idea who they are and couldn't care less. So I'm just saying to the world, you have better wake up and understand that the scientific community in this world is awash with stupidity, ignorance, and um, and basically they know what to kiss and when. They went to university, got a degree, and because you got a degree, that degree is a work permit that allows you to go out and get a job. But if you were born brilliant, I mean, just just came into the world with an extraordinary mind, then you're going nowhere. You're going nowhere because no university can claim what you did as their own. Uh, no scientific organization, American Medical Association, can't uh, can't claim that you were one of them and that they, uh, uh, you know, they were the ones who found this new uh, idea, this new concept. And so, if you're not connected to some university, university or college, or some government agency, then you are not going to be heard at all. Period. That's America, the land of the free and home of the brave. We don't talk about anybody who is doing anything of any intrinsic value for the human race. If you're doing anything to help your fellow man in America, you will go to jail. Ultimately, you will go to jail. If you're doing anything to help your fellow man, you will be fined. You will go to jail. And if you've really done something, you know, really fantastic to help the human family, you might get bumped off. They might whack you because that's what happens to truly great people in the world. While I'm on the subject of, of the sorry system of science, we might as well get into the sorry system of religion. Uh, one of the greatest single spiritual teachers that ever lived in any century, at any age, was Manly Palmer Hall, spelled M-A-N-L-Y, middle name Palmer, P. Palmer Hall, H-A-L-L. -L. So go on the web to uh, YouTube and type in Manly, M-A-N-L-Y, P. Hall, H-A-L-L. -L and listen to one of the greatest spiritual, philosophical minds that has ever existed. The man was extraordinarily brilliant, incredibly fascinating man, and he never championed any particular religious belief. He never championed any particular philosophy, nothing. What Manly P. Hall brought to the world was simply this— he explained in minute detail in a most brilliant fashion what the philosophies and religions of the world taught. Not saying that anyone was better than the other, but here, if you're going to be a Buddhist, then understand the different kinds of Buddhism and understand where it all came from. If you're going to be a Hindu, or if you're going to be a Muslim, or if you're going to be a Christian, or whatever, at least intellectually, for the first time in your life, understand where the ideas developed, who developed them, and the ancient, ancient history of the world of religions, philosophies, and concepts. And this is what Manly Palmer Hall did. He brought to the world the most astonishing, brilliant research work that's ever been done by anybody on all of the religions and concepts and, and cults of the world. Manly P. Hall. And we'll put up some information about where to find him on this program. And we can go on from Manly P. Hall. One of the, probably, in my opinion, this is Jordan Maxwell speaking, but in my opinion, one of the greatest living Christians and probably the only, probably one of the only Christian teachers that I have ever personally heard or know about is the only one that I have ever had any respect for. And this individual was a Christian minister, which I, you, uh, anyone who's heard me knows that my idea, my feelings about Christianity are very dim. 
true Christianity is different. I'm talking about church entity, the, the, the monstrosity that we call Christianity today. Christianity today is a, is a monstrosity of stupidity and ignorance. But I am not condemning Christianity in its very beginnings. The very first beginnings of Christianity are totally, 100% totally different than Christianity teachings are today. The teachings of Christianity today have no bearing, no connection, no simulants of anything connected to first century Christianity, nothing. They, they, they're two separate and totally different uh, subjects. First century Christianity, the original Christianity, as opposed to this silly nonsense we call church entity today. Christianity as a, as a monstrosity. And that's why it's mocked all over the world, and that's why it just adds to wars and violence and corruption and stupidity and ignorance of the peoples of this world, because Christianity today is a mockery of man and God has no place in civilized society. We need to do what the Bible says in the Old Testament. When God says to the ancient ones, he says, go back to the old ways. We'll put that scripture on the web so you could go back and look at it in the Bible. It says, God says in the Old Testament, go back to the old ways, meaning this newfangled, nonsensical uh, tripe that you have today called religion with your silly uh, symbols and emblems and words and terms and your churches and your foul and dirty life you live and the lies and the hypocrisy. Go back to the old ways. Well, the old ways was astrotheology. It was the ancient world's wisdom of the ancient world that the Bible is talking about when it says go back to the old ways. So just understand, from God's viewpoint, the new ways, which we call Christianity, Judaism, and Islam today, are a monstrosity on the earth. and should be wiped off the earth completely. The whole entire superstructure of Western civilization is nothing more than a man-made monstrosity of money, corruption, stupidity, and ignorance. But if you go to the Bible and do and, and listen to what the Scripture says in the Old Testament, go back to the old ways, meaning go back to the ancient world and see what the ancients were saying that you've never been told. And find out who built the great pyramids of Egypt and all the great temples and all these incredible things that we're finding, especially the temples under the oceans off the coast of Cuba, hold uh, enormous temples and, and, and temple complexes. Off the coast of Okinawa and in Japan are huge temples and temple uh, and complexes off the coast of, uh, of uh, Japan. We know that there's pyramids. There's a pyramid sitting on the ocean floor in the Atlantic Ocean. We, there are ancient temples and, and uh, all kinds of ancient uh, art, artifacts which are found all over the world that go back hundreds of thousands of years. So go back to the old ways. Get rid of this stuff we call religion and science and, and all the monstrosity of ignorance and stupidity that is arresting civilization. Uh, keep tuned to my show. I'm going to bring you some of the most incredible, fascinating people you've ever heard in your life. You will, I will guarantee you, have never heard anything like the Jordan Maxwell Show anywhere, because I intend to bring to the world the kind of people that I want the world to know about. Extraordinarily brilliant, fascinating people who you will never hear about unless somebody has the guts to bring them to the world for everyone to hear for the first time. Because if you've heard scientists, you've been listening to them for the last couple of hundred years, and they haven't told you nothing. And if you've been going to church for the last 50 years, you, can, you know as well as I do, you don't know from nothing, about nothing. So for the past 2,000 years, we've got nothing but religions killing each other, murdering each other, calling each other names, and so, you know, the, the more you pray to God, the more Christians are praying to their God for hope and, and for a better life and for protection and for, you know, all that, 
the, look at look by their fruits you shall know them. The world is growing more and more corrupt each day, bigger and bigger bloodshed all over the world, uh, all over the world each day. Why? It's because Christians are praying to an ancient old pagan god coming out of Phoenicia, Cana. The Hebrews call the ancient god Yahweh. Jehovah, Yahweh. Well, Yahweh is the same identical God as Allah. Allah and Yahweh are the same God. Different races of people have different languages, but they but it's all the same God if you start doing your homework and find out that Allah is Yahweh, Yahweh Allah. And Yahweh and Allah are connected directly to Hindu, as I've said in the past. And Christianity is practically all Hindu and Egyptian thrown in for good measure. So all I'm saying is that the religious establishment on the earth today is a mockery to anything that is sacred in the universe. Religion today on the earth has nothing to do with anything spiritual and has no concept of God at all. So, all you know, like the Bible has Jesus saying as a, as a metaphor, by their fruits you shall know them. Well, what is the fruitage of Christianity, especially in America? Well, and Christianity everywhere. What is the fruitage of Christianity? Well, you've got the, uh, the Catholic Church murdering people in the Middle Ages, burning people at the stake, pouring hot lead in the faces of the babies and children in front of their parents, uh, nailing people upside down, de- decapitating people, tying them to post and burning them alive. That's Christianity. Go back and do your homework, folks, and wake up. It's a different time now. And then you find out that Protestants were actually killing and murdering uh, uh, Catholics because they wouldn't change, they wouldn't convert to Protestantism. And so the Protestants are equally as guilty of killing Catholics as Catholics were of killing Protestants. But then, of course, Catholics and Protestants making up Christianity are equally as bad as for killing Jews and killing Arabs and Islamic. And Islamic are equally as, as, as bad killing Jews and killing Christians. So, you know, this whole thing stinks all the way up to heaven. And if there is a God, you can believe me, it has nothing whatsoever to do with the silly-ass religions that are on the face of the earth today. They're nothing more than man-made diatribes and man-made systems of usury that's arresting the human development on the earth. You can't brain, you can't use your mind, you can't think, and you can't read if you're religious. So you need to get out of the religion you're in, like the Bible says in the book of Revelation, get out of her, my people. If you do not want to suffer with her sins, that she's going to be paid back. So get out of her, my people. Meaning that if you are spiritually in tune with the Creator, then you have better get out of her. Her meaning the whole world of religion and politics. The entire thing is a filthy, disgusting mess on the earth, and we all know it. But people still love to crawl on their knees to their emperors and to their religions and to their gods. And one day it's all going to come back on us and we're going to discover that we've made a wrong turn a long time ago. And we should have taken the advice of the Old Testament and go back to the old ways. So I'm going to uh, put on the website all of the... um, the people that I highly recommend that you know about and how to find them, and it will be very easy. I'm going to make it very easy for you. Uh, After hearing the program, just go to uh, the homepage on this particular program, and we'll have the uh, websites and the names and places where you can find information on all of these different people that you need to know about. And all the nonsensical, you know, tripe that we're hearing and, and government and religion We need to understand that's why we are ignorant and ill-informed today. Uh, So, you know, we while I'm on the subject of of people and things that we've never been told about and what we want to bring to the attention of the audience, we get a lot of phone calls and emails especially uh, saying that there are particular people, particular subjects, and particular concepts that people want to hear about. 
well, my God, you know, we got world of, of particular subjects we can talk about and particular people. But I think it would be a good idea uh, to give us some ideas about the things you'd like to know about. And if there's particular subjects or a person or an idea, it uh, doesn't mean I will have any of the answers, but we'll do some homework on it and research on it and, and try and find the best minds on the earth who know about that particular subject that you're interested in, because I'm certainly not going to pontificate uh, about about anything. I prefer going to the best of the best and hearing what the experts have to say about. So if you have some particular ideas or people or concepts you want to you know about, email us and let us know. We'll try and find somebody who is an expert. With that said, um, I, will, I will summarize what I've just said to you. Uh, I have no respect for modern-day religion, or science, because I believe science is a religion. I believe the religion should be a science. There should be some intelligent investigation of spirituality and of spiritual or preternatural things. Not supernatural, but preternatural, meaning of not of this world, strange things of not of this world that are all around you from poltergeists to ghosts to demons to UFOs to aliens, all kinds of strange things are in your face. Everywhere you look, they're in your face, but you don't see them. Well, that's what the Scripture says. Many will look with their eyes, but not see, and will listen with their ears, but not hear, and with the heart, not get the sense of it. So that's what's been happening on the earth. People have been looking all around them, and they see nothing. All they see is their basketball scores and the beer, and the beer hall and the liquor store in every corner. And so the world has been put under arrest. And I think it's an idea whose time, is, whose time has come to bring to the world brilliant, intelligent, thought-provoking wisdom, knowledge, and understanding for the first time and getting away from that same old drab stuff we call radio in America today. You know, when the Federal Communication Commission chief retired many years ago, many years ago, I remember this distinctly, the head of the, um, of the Federal Communications Commission in Washington, D.C., retired, and at his retirement dinner, he said uh, something, and I'm just uh, paraphrasing it, that radio and television is a, ve is a vast, in his words, a vast waste line, a vast wasteland of nothingness. There is nothing of any intrinsic value, human value, in radio or television today, period, is what, basically what he said that uh, communications media of radio and television is a vast wasteland uh, which offers nothing to the human mind and the human psyche, nothing. There's nothing in it. It's all a bunch of silly nonsense and baseball scores and commercials and silly nonsense and religions and, and propaganda, but there's nothing of any intrinsic, legitimate, de jure value to the human mind. So this is what I would like to do, just for the hell of it. I would like to try and bring to the human uh, mind and to the radio and to my listeners extraordinarily brilliant stuff. That's what I'm interested in. I want to see a radio show done the way I want it done. Uh, 